about the inspiration behind the get together? Yeah, uh, the get together is, you know, it's a really fun movie. It was kind of inspired by my co-writer, Michael Allen and I's 20s. And it kind of covers really all the highs and lows, you know, of a person's 20s from moving to a new town to trying to consider whether to take the right job or not to uh, trying to figure out if you're with the right person and, um, you know, finally kind of nearing the end of your 20s and looking back on it all, trying to figure out if you made all the right decisions. So, um, you know, I was really inspired by films like Dazed and Confused, Richard Linklater's film. And, and so we kind of took um, the spirit of that movie and wanted to create something that was new and fresh, you know, about Austinites in their 20s. And, you know, you released your debut feature film, Believe Me, in 2014. What was the biggest lesson you learned from that experience that you were able to bring over to the Get Together? And that's a great question. Um, what did I take over? Well, I think what I loved most about Believe Me, and, and it really translated into this film, was just having a big ensemble cast. Like, I love characters, and I love um, working with a lot of people to kind of bring as many characters to life as possible. And I think, you know, this, this movie was so fun because, it's, because it takes place at a house party, you're meeting just a ton of people. And there's, it was a big cast and it was such a big group effort that um, I really liked the opportunity to work with so many talented people and so many creative people and uh, to create this ensemble comedy. Yeah, and then the film, in many ways, is a love letter to Austin. What impact has this city had on your life and career as a writer, director? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, I, you know, not sure how deep you want to go on that answer, but I feel like, you know, before this movie, I was making uh, Christian films. And so um, I had graduated from Baylor University, which is a Baptist university, and when I got to Austin, um, I just experienced a lot of different opinions and ideas and, and, uh, and people with different beliefs than mine. And I think in doing that, it really helped sort of soften um, my approach, I guess, to, to interacting and talking about faith and religion. And so this movie, you know, moving to Austin especially, um, kind of just broadened my horizons of what people are like and um, getting to know different kinds of people you know, going to a, a Baptist school, you don't get too many variations of people. <laughs> so in Austin, we've got it all. We've got weirdos uh, galore. So I think just moving to this town, it really helped sort of soften my idea of um, accepting other people, you know, for what they believe, uh, no matter what it is. And, and in turn, it's gotten, it's, it's helped me just get to know even more people. Like you were saying earlier, now, that this film is broken into three chapters, each highlighting a different stage of your 20s. Uh, if you had to describe your 20s in one sentence, what would it be and why? Dang, dude, these are good questions. Um, if I had to explain my 20s in one sentence, I would say uh, my 20s were a lot of fun, meeting a lot of different creative people that had different ideas from mine and it ended up being uh, a blessing. You've also said in uh, previous interviews that you, know, you were looking for actors who had a connection to the city. Why was that so important to you? What was that casting process like? Uh, well, the casting process was a lot of fun. I mean, we, you know, Alejandro Rose Garcia, he plays Caleb in the movie. He was the first person to sign on and and uh, he plays the role of Caleb, who is sort of a struggling musician. And I remember telling him, I was like, now you're gonna have to think back on your early days to play this character because you're not there anymore. Um, he's, he's really successful as a musician. And um, he just loved the spirit of the movie. Uh, we actually bonded because the movie takes place on a street called Speedway here in Austin. And he was like, man, I used to go to parties on Speedway uh, back in my 20s. And, and so we kind of bonded over that and just bonded over sort of the zany characters that we met uh, here in Austin. And, um, the other actors, uh, Courtney Parchman, who goes by the name Average Fashion Blogger, she's one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. She, when she auditioned for the role of August, it was totally different than what I had imagined uh, that character being. And it was so much better than we had ever imagined. And so she just sort of stole our hearts uh, in that process. Um, Jacob Artist, who plays Damien, he's uh, the third of four leads. He you know, comes from Glee and we had a quick conversation and I had just seen his strengths um, as an actor and he ended up being the perfect guy for, 
for Damien. Such a nice guy too. Gosh, I'd, I'd love hanging out with him. And then Johanna, um, we knew each other from Believe Me. She was in my last feature film. So uh, we'd worked together and she's an incredible actress who is incredibly dedicated to her craft and, and fun and kind. And so, um, yeah, the casting process was, was a lot of fun, kind of putting these zany characters together. I'm a huge fan of indie filmmaking. Uh, what, what would you say is the, the biggest thrill of that and what's the biggest challenge? Uh, you're never short on challenges. Uh, when you're making an indie film, you know, there's something going wrong every five minutes, it seems. Um, but it feels like a big summer camp, you know, with all of these, uh, these people on set. You know, it was a 12-day shoot, 12 overnights. Uh, the whole movie takes place at night. So we all kind of became zombies together uh, through staying up all night, every night. And yeah, you kind of just come out of that experience feeling like a family. And so that's, that's probably one of the most rewarding parts. Yeah, the film has made its way around the festival circuit. It's been incredibly well received. What do you think is resonating most with audiences? Well, it's, it's funny. I mean, I think this movie couldn't have come at a better time because we're all just kind of getting out of quarantine and um, it's the perfect time to sort of remember how much fun it is to be with people and to spend time with friends. And, you know, it was super nostalgic to make and now it has like a brand new level of nostalgia for totally different reasons that we couldn't have expected. So, you know, for this movie, we really want people to feel like they're hanging out with their friends and they, they miss interacting with people and hopefully it'll help them just kind of have the motivation to reach out and, and get back out and, you know, see people. Yeah, that's actually the perfect segment to this next question. You already touched upon it a little bit, but with the film getting its digital release soon, what do you hope audience, audiences take away? And has that changed just given, you know, the past year that we've had? Yeah, well, I think, you know, I think one of the most powerful, uh, Anne Lamott says, you know, it's, she's a, a writer. She says one of the most powerful things, uh, powerful sermons you can hear just the words, me too. And I feel like that's how I feel with this movie mm -hmm. of just, no matter how small of a problem you feel like a character is having, uh, somebody can relate to that problem and somebody's like right there in their lives dealing with it. And so watching all of these characters dealing with a variety of problems in their lives, there's gonna be something that you can relate to. And that's, that's kind of what I want people to know is especially when you're in your twenties and you're trying to figure everything out, um, you know, it's okay to kind of uh, hit bumps along the way, everyone does. And so my biggest hope is that they just relate to the characters and have a blast watching them kind of fumble their way through. If you could have a conversation with your 20 year old self, what would you tell him? Kevin, your questions, man. <laughs> so good. Uh, my 20 year old self, I would just say, you know, don't take everything too seriously. Uh, really lean into relationships with people and uh, care about people and, you know, everything's going to work out. Uh, career and all that is 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 great to have, but it's not everything. Um, so I'm I'm really lucky. I have a great group of friends here in Austin that I'm extremely blessed to have, and um, you know it it makes all the difference. And then a uh, final question for you: What's next for you? Yeah, uh, a couple projects uh, in the works. I've got like a a TV show. Well, I'm actually uh, I'm executive producing a TV show on the Magnolia Network called Van Gogh. Uh, it's a buddy of mine, Brett Lewis here, who flips vans into homes, which is funny mm -hmm. enough. So it's kind of a, a unscripted series that's a lot of fun. And then just writing. I've got another movie um, that's in development right now and another TV show that's kind of set in an Austin record store. That's a lot of fun. So uh, some stuff on the horizon.